All right, so this is part two of um, the fire pack out uh, tutorial. It's for selecting and coloring over traditional images. I threw both of them in as quickly as I could. So without further ado, let's start. Uh, so I chose this image. It's a bit of an older image for me. I figured um, it was a good little starting image for me. Uh, this is traditionally done last year at some point. Um, there's going to be two different ways I'm going to show you how to color over this. Um, and we're going to start with this smaller dog. Despite I actually started coloring the bigger dog first, we're going to start with the smaller dog. That's uh, coming up shortly. So here's the smaller dog. I went over the smaller dog with the pen tool. Um, so I reline arted this whole thing. Um, so now it's a little... Uh, different darker lines. Uh, this is the first way I'm going to show you how to color this. But first, let's get with let's go on with uh, the selection tools. So here are your four selection tools. You have the square select, the magic wand, the coloring. I don't know what to call it, and the eraser. Each tool does different things. Um, I'm going to show you a few different things with each tool. Pretty much they're used the same in every other program. Square tool, you select squares. Magic wand, you select areas. Uh, the coloring and erasing tools are a little different. So here's something that is different with Fire Alpaca. You can reference the entire canvas for a selection tool, or you can select a, just the layer. This is what happens when you select the entire canvas that you have shown with your magic wand tool. Uh, sorry, it's going to take a little bit. This is made. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, so when I used the magic wand tool, it only selected a very small portion because of the other coloring, or not coloring, shading that I had on the dog traditionally. This is because I selected off the entire canvas, so that is the basic area of what I can select, that little tiny white area. Moving on to the layer. Selecting off of the layer, you can select only from the layer that you're on. For example, if you have a color layer, you only select on that color layer, not the entire picture as a whole with the line art and everything else. Um, it's pretty much the main idea there. There's uh, the expand pixel thing that I'll get into later. It's not very important. So this is... I used the layer select and I was on the line art layer. I selected on the outside of the dog this time because I prefer doing that. It's a little easier for me to select um, and then just invert your selection. But I'm not going to do that quite yet. There are a few other things I would like to show you before anything else. Using the magic wand tool, you don't always get to all the cracks and crevices of your uh, traditional drawing or any drawing at that. As uh, shown here, there's a lot of purple um, where the fur is. Uh, this actually can be fixed in a few different ways. I, I figured this way was easiest to explain first because it has to deal with more selection tools. The first one I'm going to show you is the eraser tool. Um, you're going to note the first thing you're going to notice is that the selection colors change when you click on either one of these tools to white and pink. Um, with the eraser tool, you can deselect something just by using the eraser with pressure sensitivity and what is like the eraser that you use with drawing. Here's the prime example of it. See how I I scribbled on the um, pink part of the canvas and wrote eraser above it in the eraser tool. And now all of that is deselected, so I cannot color on it at this point if I wanted to. However, I'm not going to. This is merely the example. Moving on to the coloring tool, which is right above the eraser tool, so second one up. Sorry, I didn't explain that at first. Uh, the pen tool will turn things pink, and that's you're coloring in more of a selection. Uh, this is rather enjoyable sometimes because you can get into the cracks and crevices a lot easier. If your hand slips though, eh, not as fun. 
So this is what happens with the pen tool. As you can see um, on the side of the face that I had shown before, I got into all the cracks and crevices of the fur. Uh, I got the little scribble with pen written on it. That's all now selected. Uh, if I wanted to, I could color over all of that. However, I'm not going to. Something helpful, uh, press the select button on the top of your page or program and you'll be able to use a few different things. Uh, it's all really self-explanatory of itself. Transform is a little different. You can turn your rotation, um, you can flip it, you can um, resize and all of that. It, it just takes playing with to really figure it out. Expand, contract, you just gotta play with that to figure out what works for what. Inverse, you just flip the selection around. I'm about to use that right now. Um, moving on to the drawing. So as you can see, my dog is still all purple, which means I can't color on him right now. Um, everything else is liable to be colored on. This is good for backgrounds. If you don't want to color behind the actual character itself, you can just do this. Or maybe if you're looking for a shadow, you can do this as well. Uh, very simple, very simple. So here I have selected inverse selection. I am going to make everything else purple around the dog while the dog is white so I can fill the dog. Um, fill the dog with color. And that's just going to be a very simple task. You press the button, everything changes. Uh, that will be shown here shortly after this moves a little faster. Okay, here we go. So now you can see everything but the dog is purple. You can't see that in the big picture. Um, off in the left. However, on the picture that matters, the coloring picture, you can see that the dog is all white now with the background lighter still in there with the traditional drawing. Um, I'll show you how to fill this shortly. Okay, so here are your three filler tools. You have the bucket, you have your fade in, fade out, that's fun to play with sometimes, and your uh, box fill. I use the box fill because it works best when coloring over other layers. You simply select the box area that you want to color in and it'll color it for you despite having layers under it or over it. It'll still only color on that layer. Just like I've done here, the entire dog was colored in just by using that one little selection tool. I just went over the dog. It uh, filled it with the color, kind of like the bucket tool, but the bucket tool doesn't work as well as this tool does for coloring a large amount of area, especially if there's different layers still visible. Now the second coloring is this kind of coloring. I did not go over any of the lines, I simply colored inside the dog with my airbrush tool. Um, I would pretty much just use the airbrush tool until it was mostly opaque, uh, used all the different colors really wasn't that hard. Um, scribbled a little bit, got a few highlights in myself. Uh, after that, you simply just um, make the drawing a little more transparent and then you get your main coloring like this. Uh, it's a little whiter because I used pretty light colors. You can use different colors and play with it and you'll get different effects. You can shade it like this as well. I didn't, however. Um, but you can still see all the lines and all of my original shading with the traditional picture. And so the, those are the two kinds of coloring that I know how to do over a um, traditional image. Uh, that's also a little bit on so, uh, the selection tools. Really, they just take a lot of playing around with and getting used to. It doesn't come just by listening to a tutorial. You actually need to sit down and work with the selection tools and a lot of times the coloring just to get used to it. So I just want to thank you all for watching once again. Um, I'm still working on making a few better tutorials about Fire Alpaca without any uh, screen editing other than just a screen capture. Any more requests, feel free to comment or send me a uh, message. Thank you.